In this video, I want to take a really close look at the two Genesis creation stories and take a look at something that you can see somebody tried to hide something in there. Actually, two different people tried to hide something in there at different times. Langton, in the way that he chaptered it in more recent times, but in the story itself, we're going to see a verbiage overlap, a line that seems out of place. We'll pull it out and take a look at what it uh, sounds like if it's not there. And then think about why they did that. All right, there's a couple of things about my interpretation technique that's incredibly important. And if you're following along or if you want to do what I'm doing, one thing I have to say right up front is you really have to be, um, I, I'd say, emotionally disconnected from the material enough to be able to look at it objectively. And that can be a difficult thing. I'm really looking at this Bible as as if I'm trying to analyze Homer, you know, Shakespeare, something like that, uh, any mythology from antiquity. I'm, I'm looking at it from that kind of a perspective. So in doing so, I see something in there that allows me to, um, I guess, make some comparisons with other material. Genesis is a difficult thing to pick through. Honestly, if I go to Exodus, I go, well, there's a monomyth right there. What's Genesis then? And you look and you look and you go, boy, that's a really old monomyth. It's kind of like, originally it was kind of like the Enum Elish from the Babylonians, but it didn't stay that way. It got changed and it morphed. Now, I make these claims, but I'm going to tell you there are so many parts to this that it's not in, you can't learn this in a short period of time. But let's start right off with the two creation stories then, right in the beginning. We're going to see, and you know, I won't, I won't cover the chapters, but if you look, you will see that when... When Langton chaptered it, he put chapter two starting on day seven. There's a day, there's a seven day creation story of one style, and then there's a second one. He put the chapter break in the wrong place purposefully because he chaptered in two places in the, in Genesis, he chaptered in a weird place. Everywhere else he chaptered at each step. You can, if you read the steps, you realize they're perfect. It's like island hopping, except there's a, a couple of incorrect overlaps right where the templates begin. Let's take a look. So what I'm using here for this is a NRSV updated edition. It's just easier to read. I don't use this for my number searching, but for reading, um, this is going to be a little bit easier to understand. Now, what I want to do is talk about the two styles and the way that this kind of jumps out at me is uh, like with coding, um, Software coding, if you, I've, I've never gotten into it too much, but I've done a, a, some light stuff and there's some things called if then statements. If this happens, then that, if this, then that, if this, you know, you, you would probably have that on like space launches and things like that. If this fails, then shut down. If that fails, then shut down. If this, you know, things like that. If so, those are always part of electronics and well, their life there. It's a cause and effect. Honestly, if you look at it, it's more than that. If you, if it rains, you get wet. If this, then that. You see that is always going to be there. So what we do is we go through each and every one of these. Every one, there's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven days. Then God said, let there be. And there was. Day two. Dome in the midst of the waters. Let there be. And so God made. There was. Then God said, let the waters. And so it was. Let the earth, and so it was. Let there be, and so it was. Let the waters, so God created. Let the earth, and so, and it was so. Let us make humans, so God created humans. Okay, and then it does not do that on day seven. Day seven does something different. But what we have here is a, a whole pile of if-then statements. It's a very structured, it's a very structured sounding document. Okay, so if I move into the second creation story, what I'm going to do is see something that's a little bit different. It, it, there's a strange thing going on. It should kind of trip you up when you start reading through these and reading them that way. As you go through here, it does not have those if-thens except for one time right here. It does not read the way the other one does. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed out of the garden out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also. You can see it reads different. It doesn't say, and God said, and it was so, and then God said, and it was so, and it doesn't do that except for right here. And God said, let a stream rise from the earth and water the face of the ground, and it was so. That one right there doesn't sound like it belongs here. In fact, watch what happens if we just omit it. 
I'm just going to take it out. And let's have a read without it and let's see what it sounds like. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living man or a, be a living being. Okay, now this sounds like it would have probably sounded originally. It does not have that one if then in there. So what I'm suggesting is that when this was added in, when this creation story was added in, that there was a, there's a seam right here. Now the chapter breaks were not there to begin with. They, they were put in in more recent times by Langton. So this was simply the, the story just flowed in a verbal uh, manner. But right here, it would have changed styles very radically. However, and, and probably get people's attention. However, if you put that one line in here, right there, which doesn't need to be there, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And God said, let a stream rise from the earth and water the face of the ground. And it was so. God made this, the stream to rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And God saw that it was good. I put strange flow doesn't fit the literary style of second creation story, but rather the first one omitted past the dash of the story still intact. It's an if then anyway. Okay. So that right there looks to me like somebody tried to, it's, it's kind of like this maybe here, the story budded like this. So let's try to overlap it a little bit like that. So that, it, so instead of there being a, a it's kind of like two colors coming together and you kind of blend them a little bit. But what they're doing in the story here is trying to blend those a little bit so that you, they don't sound so different. And then, if Langton put chapter breaks there, then he further tried to obscure that. But what does that also tell us? Langton knew what this is, and he's trying to hide what is there. What does that tell us? That implies that the church knows what this is, the Catholic church, that behind the scenes, and that we're not allowed to know it. They're, they're tweaking around this stuff. Okay, so not only was that uh, the first creation story, the seven-day one, added in and tried to make it blend so it sounded like it belonged there originally when you can see it doesn't. We get the same thing when we get down to where the first template ends and the second template begins, right? Where the calling of Noah is. What we're going to see right here in chapter 6, or in, yeah, chapter 6, what, what's called chapter 6, the wickedness of humans is where this is where everything goes south and it's time for God to come and destroy everything. What does it say here at the end? He's going to destroy everything for I am sorry that I have made them. Okay, so it's time for earth destruction and that's going to begin right here. Now that should end that chapter. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. That is the calling right there. You see that he didn't put it in the right place. He put chapter 7 way down here where the great flood is. So there's a significant amount of the second template that is being held in a chapter. If you read it without the chapters, you got it figured out. If, you, if you're looking at the chapters, it, it'll mess you up. But you can just see that he chaptered it very purposefully in these two locations off that, that they're not accurate. Everywhere else is accurate. Here they are not. The, I, would exp I would look at that and say, yeah, that's intentional. He's either trying to tell us to look here or prevent us from seeing the, the cut over. Now, you can see that in the, the Noah callings, there's two things here. First, this would have been the original one. This, this would have been the original part of the story and see why. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of its kind shall come into you to keep them alive. Okay, then we've got the second calling here, and this aligns with the first of the two creation stories. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate. You see right there, the seven pairs, seven days. Something is happening in a numbering system that you don't see until we get into it. There's a very specific reason for that to be there, but you can see what they didn't even remove the first one. They left the original in place and added in a second one and tried to make it lap in a way that you can't quite see it. But it, it actually is an attention getter when you read it. It's like, how come 
How come he's told two different things, two different instructions? So we see those breaks right there. I'm not going to try to pull this one apart like I did the, the creation. That one was simple. This one's a lot thicker, and they've added some things into it as part of a numbering system. So I just want to point that out. So these are the changes that we see that tell me the Catholic Church knows exactly what this 50-step template, two templates is. This is why I need to make the videos. I go through them and I go through them and I catch myself and I edit and I find things. That's that chapter seven, when the flood starts, that's the flood means turning inward, purity time. Seven, purity, seven. So, wow, six, yeah. You know what? They couldn't blend it any other way. Noah had to be where he is because seven can't start until it's time to purge. There needed to be a six and a half. <laughs> All right. They know exactly what it is. And they are trying to hide the way to figure it out. In antiquity, this was available. It still is today, but we don't have it memorized. We don't know it well enough. You see what I'm doing is too thick to just sit and talk about. We have to use the computer. And I say that only by looking at material and analyzing it and, and pulling it apart and seeing different pieces and then just trying in your mind to figure out why is that that way. What we're going to see is that there was originally a, a Genesis that was smaller and it probably had Lilith in there. That was taken out. But what ha happened then is that a, that, that it became big, that Genesis and the entire Abrahamic tradition morphed into something that was really big. But there was, there's a technique that they're going to be using in numbering system that they're going to maintain all throughout Abrahamic material that we don't have access to because we don't know the Bible well enough. We don't have it memorized. And we're going to have to look at it using the computer. We'll see that here. Um, but what happens then is in Genesis is they add it in to make it longer. They want to keep this, this template sequence going on again and again and again. We go back for healing processes. That's what it is about. It's for inner healing. We go back again and again and again. So it gets held that way in the story. Very hard to see. Genesis, what? Is it, is it doing that? Okay, that's what this series is going to be about, figuring out how they are nesting that teaching in this material. And that, that's why it sounds so goofy. But we'll, as we'll get into it. All right, so what happened, though, is they, since they made it bigger, what they're doing is creating a numbering system. And that's what the seven days came in. And then as far as Noah, that had to be there as well. That seven had to be there. There's a certain name and number repeats that are so incredible in here that they're going to line up. You know, 40 is a number we need. This is repeated 40 times. This name is repeated 40 times. It's not just gathered up in the Sodom analog farm or the 800 with you know, the numbering. I'll do that later. There's layers to this that are pretty thick. And if you step back and look at it, what you see is 50 is one of the numbers that we gather up and there's 50 chapters. And if you start looking through, like for example, 12 is one of the numbers that we gather up and 12 is a place that would be a good starting point then. And if you go look for chapter 12, that's where Abram and Sarai start. It's like, whoa, there's so many ping, 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 ping. That was Langton, but that you know what? That's where the, that's where the chapter break is. That's where the natural flow of the chapter break is right there. The two that are not, the only two that he didn't put in the right place are the creation and the calling. Those are obscured. And like I said in my previous edit, I'm putting this in in editing too. I now see after making this video and looking at it, I'm seeing that that chapter seven had to be right where it was. And Noah was there. There was a destruction. There was too much material. They, they had to stuff that calling at the end of six because you can't have the calling start when the purity is the, the yeah, the, yeah, I can see a reason why they're sequencing it and it needed to stay at 50 chapters. They couldn't add another one in, but that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that, I do see that's a break point that is bizarre. Once you get to the template level, you go, oh, something's not quite right here. And you go, that's because there's things added together. It's, it's kind of a clue and there's some overlapping going on. Yeah. <laughs> but then the numbering system picks up. Okay. So, uh, for this video, I just wanted to show that the, the creation was really the big one. That was kind of something to look at that you can go, yeah, you know, it's up to you to decide whether you want to believe that or not. To me, I look at it and go, those are two different writing styles. One of them sounds like this and one of them sounds like that. One of them sounds like a technical manual for the soul, and the other one sounds like, 
I don't know, like a poem. They're, they sound different to me. Except for you go into the next one that sounds like a poem and there's that one kludge piece right in there. It's like, whoa, here's a piece of mechanical stuff right in this smooth flow. <laughs> that's how it seems in my head. So that's why they kind of pop out. But um, all right. So that's it for this video. Questions, comments. Um, the sequences along the way, I believe, as we get into it, are going to I think we're going to find some magical things lining up that's going to blow our minds just by looking at it this way. It's right in our faces. We don't know it because we don't know how to know it. I'm not looking at anything different. I'm just looking at it in a different way. All right, see you in the next video.